It's a small slice of heaven placed down here on earth. I care for his trees, I water his son, I don't own it, I just rent it from God. because he has EPM. So that's my stallion, all looky here now, or as we call him, Bob. And unfortunately, he's been diagnosed with EPM, equine protozoa myoencephalitis. Bob was born here on my farm in October of 2019. He was born the same color of his mo mother, which was Sabino, or as the old timers would call it, a strawberry roan. His mother is Lad's Peppermint Patty Z. She is my favorite fox trotter I've ever owned. She had the smoothest gait, and she has a unique way of moving her shoulder, which gives her more stride on the front end than any other mare I've ever owned. She was 13 years old before I ever showed her in 2013 and we won a reserve world championship in a class of over 20 horses and she's won countless blue ribbons for my children since then this is bob's father the world grand champion southern playboy owned and showed by clyde Connolly. bob was a healthy and very smart little baby but i have to admit i was a little bit disappointed to get a sorrel i really wanted a palomino out of playboy and my mare and uh, I'd never quite had one born the color that Bob was born but everybody told me to look at the eyelashes and the eyelashes will tell you what color your horse is going to finish out to be well Bob's eyelashes were as red as they could be they were the reddest part of his body it doesn't quite show up in this picture here but on day one they were as red as the mare When he was still very small, I posted on Facebook and asked everybody what color they thought he would finish out. And it was a resounding sorrel. But one person knew he would be Palomino, and that was the owner of Southern Playboy, Clyde Connolly. He said, nope, that little colt is going to shed off as a yearling as a dark Palomino. And Clyde was right. This is a photo of Bob down at the river as a yearling before he contracted EPM. This footage is of the first day that, he, that Bob showed any neurological symptoms. I walked out that morning and instantly knew something was wrong and got him out and made this film. The day before this, he was walking and striding beautifully and all of a sudden there was a hitch on his hind end. The very next day, we took him to the vet, but on the physical examination, we kind of thought that he might have injured himself. It wasn't until about a month later that he started to get worse that we sent off a blood, blood work to the University of California and confirmed he had EPM. I started him on a medication called Marquis. He showed no improvement after about a month and a half of being on Marquis. So then we tried a compounded medication with DMSO in it, and he still didn't improve. So then I searched out a leading expert on EPM in horses. Dr. Crosby from Arcadia, Oklahoma is a renowned EPM specialist. He agreed to let me film him to share his knowledge on EPM with my viewers. So basically your patella has three patellar ligaments, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so what happens basically is you get neurologic. Okay, you got a neurologic horse. He's neurologic because he has EPM, supposedly. We don't know. I, I we yeah. I we did suppose send, that. I did send off the test to the University of Cal California. Yeah. Okay. So then we've got a positive blood test saying he's got EPM. He has other symptoms that says he has EPM. Okay. Uh -huh. So you have two forms of EPM. You have a muscular form and a neurologic form. Uh -huh. Okay. The muscular form is passed by everything that eats meat and takes a crap in the hayfield. Okay, that's called sarcosis, it's ferri. 
Okay, so if Farmer Brown's horse dies over here in the corner and he drags him off to the corner and lets mm -hmm. everything eat him, coyotes, all that stuff goes out to the hay. <laughs> and then they take crap in the hay field. Okay? The protozoan cysts are in the feces. So when the horses eat that hay, mm -hmm. they get infested. Yeah. So if they get the muscular variety, what ends up happening is they have sore muscles. They don't really have any neurologic symptoms. Well, I'm fairly so certain I know how he got it too. Okay, so well, hang on, let me finish my story. Okay. So the neurologic ones pass by possums. Uh -huh. Okay, same deal, possums eat something, they get it, it goes to the feed or it goes through the hay. Generally speaking, it's the hay. So the neurologic deal, when they hatch, the eggs hatch in the intestine, they get into the bloodstream, they go to any kind of neurologic tissue they can find. If they get into the spinal cord, that causes the interference of the electro, electrical signals in the spinal cord, mm -hmm. which in turn ends up usually affecting them more in the back. So you get a neurologic horse. It can affect him in the front. You can get facial nerve paralysis. You can get blindness. You can get all kinds of symptoms depending on where it's at. I've had horses that colic uncontrollably. I've had all kinds of different things. Okay, so. Basically, 90% of the time, you see symptoms in the back. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, with the neurologic form, you'll see problems in the stifle, and what you're seeing is subluxation of the patella. Uh -oh. So when that pulls, there's three of them. There's a lateral one, a middle one, and a medial one. The medial one's on the inside. If the medial one gets a little bit of laxity in it, it creates a twist in the patella which then hangs, <laughs> hangs in that, that ridge that they're supposed to run in, okay? And when it hangs, that's when the leg sticks out behind him. He's, his patella is stuck in the ridge that's supposed to be the trochlear ridge. Okay. So there's excess liquid in this stifle, excess fluid. Okay. okay. Same thing as if you get excess liquid in your stifle, okay? Yeah. So the thing we have to do before we do anything is we have to x-ray this stifle. But we know this horse is still neurologic, uh -huh. okay? So this should be coming from that. The fact that he's neurologic points to the fact that this should be caused by this. However, we've created a laxity in that medial patella ligament, which causes the patella to twist a little bit and hang in that deal. So we started with a neurologic issue and we end up with a mechanical issue. Uh -huh. So we've got two separate issues. We're still neurologic, but now we have a mechanical issue in the stifle. Mm -hmm. If we take an x-ray of that and there's damage in that stifle, mm -hmm. well, that's going to affect the way we go at it. Okay. Okay, so neurologic horses like this one, <laughs> uh, you're all right. 30 days won't get it. Uh -huh. You almost have to treat them for three months, and I usually switch my medicine. If I use Marquis one month or whatever, I'll switch to something else the next month. Now, there's two, two different ways to go treatment. One of them is commercial treatments, which you have Marquis. Mm -hmm. You have Toltazuril, mm -hmm. which is Iclazuril pills, and you have Rebalance, which is sulfopyrimethamine. That's your commercial meds. Mm -hmm. Okay? There's compounded meds like the last ones you used, the Toltazuril and the DMSO. Mm -hmm. That didn't come from me, but I use that a lot. But mm -hmm. those are compounded meds. Yeah. Okay? So, what you have to do is you have to make a decision. Okay? can't leave him up in a stall because he's going to be he's going to lock that stifle well andy's out with mares right now yeah you're reading him he hasn't shown any interest do you think he's old enough to settle a mare old? he turned two last month uh, he's old enough to settle one but it'll be a it'll be a stretch plus the fact that he's neurologic he's sick so his interest level is going to be down yeah. it'll be a tough go so basically what i'm saying is for you to have any chance to beat this guy, you're going to have to treat three months in a row mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. Okay? We can x-ray this stifle today and see if there's any damage in it. Okay? I don't really see a whole lot of... This is what we were talking about. Blister versus death. Uh -huh. He's locked and he's got a subluxated patella. But he's got a ton of fluid in his stifle. So I'm not concerned whether he has an OCD or something like that. It's congenital defect in the bone. So I need to know that before we go on okay. to anything else. 
Well, I just I only about three days have not been given in medicine, so I could, I mean, basically, I could count this as the first month already if I that's could get fine. right on something. And that's perfect. Yeah. We, and we can get that done. Okay. But that's what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to treat him for three months straight. What's the stuff called you, I just Coach got done? Coach Rizzo on DMSS. Yeah, and okay. get some more from him so you, if you need to or if he's going to pump him, you're going to pump him full of it? Well, we're going to talk about it. We're going to yeah. talk about how to treat him. All right. And then one other little thing I just noticed. It looks like he cut the back of this hawk and there's a piece of flesh hanging off. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw it. There's not much to it. He took several different x-rays and had them developed there on site. And luckily, we found out that Bob has no congenital birth defects and no damage to any structure. So if we could get him over the neurological symptoms, he should be sound. Because of the results of the x-ray, Dr. Crosby decided to insert a GI tube into his stomach to pump medication in. So this will be anti-inflammatory and a neurological medicine, right? Very good. How come he does so much worse in a stall than he does out in the pasture? Because when you put him in the stall, he can't move around and it gets stiff. He needs to move around so he keeps it limber. Oh, that's stifle, yeah. tends to back out. Okay. He's pretty easy to do anything with. So last question. What's the chances of him being sound enough to ride? You won't know until you get this get that full bottle in him. Okay. Once you get this full bottle in him, then you'll have a pretty good idea. Generally speaking, I'll treat like you said, you'll have your got your marquee, then you'll have your totazrol that you're in now, and then you'll go to totazrol with this in it, right? Mm -hmm. That'll be your third month. Okay. Mm -hmm. After that, you can look on there's a holistic medicine site called Old West Holistics, mm -hmm. and they have a follow-up med called Super EPM Dewormer. Stupid name, but it's a pretty interesting product. I've had a lot of lingering neurologic effects that go away. Okay. After you treat with that, okay? Cool. So we'll have two or three months, three full months of treatment. The marquee this and the other. Well, the marquee has had a big gap between right. then and, and... If we need to go another another one after this, and we'll have to, we'll get together next month when I come back. We'll do okay. Check. Okay. And this tells me how to how to dose it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's got the label okay. on already. Every Great. time you grab this bottle, because it it, it tends to settle out. Got right. it. These are compounded medications. Okay. Okay. Um, all the instructions are both on here. But 20 cc's the first day, 15 cc's each day after that until it's gone. You're going to finish the one you're on right now first. Okay. And then you'll do this one. And then okay. I'll see you in about 30 days for a recheck. Okay. See where we're at. Now, with the locking stifle, if the stifle continues locking even after we're done with our neurologic treatment, mm -hmm. we may have to do what's called an internal blister and go into one of those ligaments yeah. to blister to cause it to shorten up a little bit. Okay. And that, that'll be it. So all of that's secondary. Only when we get to the third month or so will we have a good idea of what we've got done. Okay. And the bad thing is that sometimes the shit comes back. Right. 
so we need to stay on top of it. Well, I probably have to do it every three month deal just as a preventative until we figure this out. Okay. It's been about 45 days since the vet visit. We finished the Totazerol and DMSO compound and medication that I already had. And then we went ahead and gave the full bottle of medication that he sold us that day. And sad to say, there has been no improvement. Um, prior to that, we had used a drug called Marquee, and we had used four full tubes of that, when the recommendation is usually just three tubes. Uh, but we did the three tubes, waited a week, and all of the symptoms came back, and we started with the fourth tube. And by the time the fourth tube was over is when I started with the Totazerol. Um, these are Bob's mares that he's out with. He's doing well, but as you can see in this video, he still has a hitch um, and, and kind of shows lameness on his back end. We're hoping that he was successful in getting the mares settled, but we don't know yet. And we will be uh, having them checked by ultrasound soon. And I have the homeopathic drug that the veterinarian recommended we try after the medication uh, stops. It should be arriving within the next week or so. And we will have a 60-day supply of that. And I'll be making follow-up videos to show the ultrasounding and to see if he was successful um, getting the mare settled as well as if the homeopathic treatment shows any signs of improvement. Um, if you're interested in seeing those follow-up videos, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for notifications and like this video. Um, to subscribe to my channel, doesn't cost anything. It just helps my channel grow and helps uh, support the page. So thank you very much. God bless. Thank you.